Reading Pioneers is proud to present My Worst Best Friend. Stories by Julie Cavaco. Illustrations by Jack Cavaco. Best Tricks I went to the park to meet my best friend, Andy. It was a very sunny summer day, and we had the week off before we went to camp. We planned to work on our best bike tricks. I had my helmet on. The rest of my safety gear was in my backpack. I was all set. I could see Andy on the other side of the park. I called to him. He didn't seem to hear me. He was standing still. His back was to me. I rode my bike over to where he was, but just as I got there, the train fell off my bike. I asked Andy to help me, but he just stood there with his back to me. I was not happy with what was going on with my bike. I know I said a word my mother wouldn't like. The chain went on after the third try, and I relaxed. Andy was still standing the same way. I went to face him. His face was white as a ghost and frozen with a look of fear on it. I took a step back. My mouth was hanging down to my chest. He spoke a word in a low voice. His mouth didn't move. I made myself move in closer to hear him. Even though he said the same word over and over again, I still had a hard time hearing him. I was very glad when I finally heard the word zombie. Zombie? I cried. What do you mean, zombie? And with that, he took my hand. I pulled my hand away and took a step back. My hand turned white as a ghost where he touched it. Andy took a step closer to me. His arms and legs were stiff. His eyes never blinked. I took another step and fell into a bush. I couldn't yell. I was so afraid I felt like I could throw up. Andy came close to me. He leaned over me. I did not dare to think that this was my best friend. His other hand came around from his back. He had an oozing green thing in his hand. He spoke. I can't ride bikes with you today. My mom wants me to go back inside. I got a bad sunburn. I can hardly walk. She put too much sunscreen on me. I'm all white. Want a freeze pop? And then he burst out laughing. I said another word my mother wouldn't want me to say. But I'm no fool. I took the freeze pop. Another time around. Andy was on the ground. The ball had hit him on his head, and he was flat on his back. The team ran to his side. The coach had us all move back two steps. He needed some air. This kid was always getting hurt. One time, he broke his little finger when he was at bat. Another time, he slid into first base and hurt his ankle. He got a sunburn when we had a long game and had to stay in for three days. And now, this. The coach had an ice pack and wanted to put it on Andy. We saw that his eye was puffy. He was going to have a big, fat black eye. When Andy got up to walk away, the crowd cheered for him. He was out of the game. I knew what that would mean. It could only mean what it always did. I would be stuck in his spot at second base. And then it came. The order from the coach for me to take second. No surprise there. We played a good game. I'm not as good as Andy, but I did okay. We didn't win. We were glad anyway. We thought we would lose big time without Andy, but the score 
was close. After the game, I went to Andy's house to see how he was. I brought him ice cream in a cup. It looked more like a milkshake, but he was glad to have it. He said it was hard to smile. I could not keep my eyes off his face. His eye was big and puffy, bigger than at the game. He had an ice pack that he took on and off. His face was white. I felt so bad for him. I asked him if his mom had put too much lotion on his face to make it so white. He said no. He looked kind of worried. He asked for the hand mirror from the bathroom. I went to get it. I had to go down the stairs for it. When I got back to the room, he was sound asleep. My mouth fell open. I wasn't gone that long. I tried to get him to wake up. I said his name. I said, Boo! I tapped his foot with my shoe. No luck. I was thinking he must be sick. I started to leave the room to get his mom. He said my name. His voice was soft. Then he said, Come here. Need you. I went closer. I leaned in to listen. I was so worried he'd give me some sort of sickness. He raised his hand very slowly as if to pull me closer. I was so sad for him, my poor friend. Would he be all right? He slipped the ice pack down my shirt and I jumped around. He tricked me! I wanted to be mad, but I was glad to see him smile and even a little glad that it hurt when he smiled. Dream Day The Super Duper Go-Kart Park opened at 10 in the morning. My friend Andy and I were there at 9. I had money from odd jobs and it was burning a hole in my pocket. That's a saying my mother always says. I still really don't know what she means, but I know how it feels. I want to spend my money fast. It was the first day the park was open for the season. The reason we got there early is that we didn't want to spend the whole day there. The lines get longer later in the day. When you get there early, you get to ride more in less time. We had big plans for the rest of the day. Andy's birthday was the day before. It was my present to treat him to the best day he ever had. I was also going to take him to the new Zombies Live movie after we got pizza for lunch. I heard the movie was really scary. I brought earplugs and I planned to close my eyes for most of the movie. I hate scary movies! but Andy loves them. I was hoping that this would be so scary that even Andy would be scared. He's always scaring me. I wanted to get him back, give him some bad dreams for once. The go-karts were great. Andy got stuck in the corner for most of the time. He laughed so much. Then we split a large cheese pizza, and had grape soda. We left too full to have any popcorn at the movies. We got to the theater early and got the best seats in the back row. We put our hands up in front of the movie projector and cast monster shadows on the screen. It was fun! When the movie started, the theater was full and people sat right next to us. That bugged me. I wanted to be able to move around in my seat when I got nervous. Andy didn't mind. I put in my earplugs. Andy sat there with his eyes wide open and laughing out loud. 
At one point, he got up to go to the bathroom. I didn't go with him because I'd have to open my eyes. I sang to myself so I wouldn't hear the soundtrack. And I never opened my eyes. I was so scared. When the movie was over, I saw that Andy never came back. So I waited in my seat and hoped he would come back. All the other people left. I stood up to go. I looked in the other rows. Andy was nowhere to be found. As I turned to leave, I heard the outside door open. I turned to see a shadow come through the door. I almost jumped out of my skin. I was about to run when I heard Andy say my name. I laughed with relief. He told me he was so scared that he waited outside for me. We both laughed at that. I was glad because I finally got him back good. The only problem is, I'm the one having the bad dreams. Playdate I went over to my friend Andy's house to play. This is a great place to go. It is never boring. He has one brother and two sisters. They are all fun to play with. So, if you get sick of one, you just go look for another. Just walking in there makes you smile because all their names rhyme. There's Andy, Randy, Sandy, and Candy. They have bigger names that don't rhyme, but their nicknames do. Any mother who would do that has to have a sense of humor. They own a garden shop. They have flowers all over the place. Their shop is small, so his mom has to bring some of the plants over to the house. It's next door to the shop. There's just enough room to eat on the edge of the dining room table. They have stacks of books with plants on the covers all over the floor. My favorite part about playing there is looking at the water gardens. They are amazing. They grow plants in water. Each garden is a mini pond with fish and frogs in it. There's one larger pond that has snails in it. Even though the shop is in the middle of town, I always feel like I'm out in nature. I was at the dining room table playing a card game with Andy when his younger sister, Candy, brought in a frog. It jumped from her hands and landed in the flowers in the middle of the table. It surprised me, and I jumped up and knocked the cards to the floor. When I bent down to pick them up, the chair I was in fell over and landed on Candy's toe. She started to cry, and I turned to help her and knocked into the table. The frog jumped up onto my back, and I yelled in surprise. Andy was laughing, lying on the floor just as his dad came into the house. You could tell he didn't have any idea what was going on. Freeze! he yelled, and we did. He is a very nice man, so you know he means business when he raises his voice. We froze in place and he picked the frog off my back. Just then, their puppy came bombing through the door and was so excited, she peed on the floor. The frog jumped over to the bookcase and the puppy started licking Andy's face. His dad picked up the dog. We were still frozen. Candy stopped crying. Andy stopped laughing. I stood there wondering what else could happen. Clean it up, his dad said with a tired-looking smile. He took the dog outside. I got the cards. Andy cleaned the dog's puddle. Candy found the frog and took it outside. Andy shuffled the cards and said, This is boring. What do you want to do next? Horsing around. It was Day three for us at our week-long camp. Andy and I got to share a bunk in cabin number eight. It wasn't so bad, 
being away from home since I had my best friend with me. Andy had been there before. He knew all the back pathways to places and what things were going on when. I just followed him. My mom warns me that following Andy around as much as I do could get me in trouble someday. But since I was new at the camp, I wanted to follow him. That day, we had some free time. We could go to the game hall, playground, or to our bunks to read or rest. By day three, Andy was getting a little bored. He didn't want to do anything on the list of things we should do. He took the back path to the stables. My mom is right. Things don't always go well for Andy. And even though he always seems to luck out in the end, I was afraid to think of what could happen to him if he went to the barn alone. What if his luck ran bad? So I followed him. When we got to the fence, the horses were on the far side of the yard. We stood up on the fence and they came over to visit us. Andy thought they wanted food. We didn't have any. There was no one nearby to ask. So Andy opened the gate to go give them some feed. I tried to stop him, but he told me he knew all about the place because he was at camp last year. I just stood and watched. The horses were pretty smart. They didn't follow Andy. Two just watched him. The other went to the open gate. I called to Andy to tell him to close the gate, but it was too late. The horse ran out. The person in charge of the horses had heard me and came running. Who left the gate open? She yelled. Since Andy was inside the fence, I think she knew the answer before she asked it. I was glad I didn't follow Andy this time. Come help me, you two, she called. She waited at the gate for the two of us to join her. She had the name Pam on her t-shirt. She closed the gate behind Andy and gave him the evil eye, saying, Follow me. We need to find her. I couldn't believe it. What had Andy done now? He looked like he was about to cry, and I was so nervous I had to work hard not to laugh. We walked along the path the horse could have taken. The whole time, Pam was talking about what a foolish thing that was to do and how the horse could get hurt. She could break an ankle, eat something that could make her sick, or make it out of the road. Andy was turning greener with every word she said. It was easy to tell he felt very bad. We came upon another fence. The horse was there munching on grass. Pam gave Andy a look like she knew all along that the horse would be here. Andy's face lit up and I burst out laughing. Boy, did he luck out. But I don't think he felt so lucky when he found out he was going to clean out the horse stalls during his free time for the rest of the week. It's a puzzle. Andy was on his hands and knees in front of the fence. He was reaching through the slats. He looked up a few times, but didn't see me walk up behind him. When I said hello, he just about jumped out of his skin. I love it when I get him like that. It's rare that I get him to jump. He's always tricking me. He told me that he was trying to get a 50 cent piece that was on the other side of the fence. It was a few inches from his fingers. I offered to try. I didn't have any better luck. We went to look for a stick. We found one that was way too long. It was the size of a small tree branch. When we tried to put it through the slats, it wouldn't fit because it was too big around. It was much too thick to break, so we looked for something else. Andy had the idea that we should get a string and tie a rock on the end. He got the string, and I found the rock. We tossed it through the slats. 
If the rock landed on the coin, maybe it would drag the coin with it as we pulled on the string. When that didn't work, we tried the string from above. We wondered if the coin might be real silver. Andy said we should try a magnet. He ran inside and got a big magnet while I untied the string from the rock. When he came back, I tied the string onto the magnet. We fed it under the fence. Whatever metal the coin was made of made it so it didn't work with a magnet. I asked Andy if he had any cardboard. I thought we could slip it under the coin if we pushed at it quickly. Sort of like a pancake turner. He got a cereal box that was pretty flat. But the only thing that it did was push it farther away. The pancake turner idea made me think of campfire tools. Andy said he could get a turner with a long handle. We looked for one and found it hanging on the grill. It came pretty close to reaching the coin. We did slip it under, but not all the way. As we were bringing it back to us, it fell off and rolled even farther away. We went over all the things we had done. Then we made up silly ways we could try to get it. Teach the cat to get it. Borrow a dog. Put gum on the end of a stick. Make a robot. Teach a snake to get it. I had been there an hour by the time we went over all the ideas. It had been a lot of fun thinking of the ways to get the coin. I told him, it's hopeless. Let's just forget it. Yeah, I think you're right, he said. Let's go play ball, but let me get my coin first. He opened the gate. My mouth dropped open. He burst out laughing. I was tricked again. Thank you, Pioneers, for reading with us today to the book series, My Worst Best Friend by Julie Cavaco. I thoroughly enjoyed this book's short stories because of the relatability and the visible challenges that arise from having a best friend. These six chapters are actually part of the first bundle of the book series, so if you're interested in more content by Julie, you can check out the rest of the books and her other bundles on Amazon. Links are available in the description box below. I'm so grateful that Julie contacted me to read this book with you today. If you have a book you would like to be read on this channel, please send me an email, contact at readingpioneers.com, so we can turn it into the next video. Also, it would help this channel if you liked the video, share the story with your best friend and family, and subscribe to stay tuned for the next read aloud from this series, as I plan on finishing the first bundle later this year. Unfortunately, this is it for today. While waiting for the next upload, please check out this book on Amazon to help support Julie and Jack. This is going to be it for now, so thanks again readers for joining us today, and until next time, I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye!